cabaret, oh cabaret, oh cabaret. Big Gates, come on, Sada. You feeling good? Leave your troubles outside. In here, life is beautiful. The performers are beautiful. Even Joseph is beautiful. <laughs> now presenting the useless eaters. Bye. 
down. And then I came out and the MC was a much more approachable role, but for this show that's really taken, which is, it's fun. <laughs> so you're all going to be treated to my regular brand of drag, which is something like if Mrs. Doubtfire fell and tripped and stumbled into the discount aisle at a Michael's Crafts. <laughs> you're welcome. Speaking of craft, I'm great at segues, if you can't tell. <laughs> I started working with yarn when I was quite young. My great aunt and my nana taught me the basics of knitting and crocheting. It was something that I could do with my hands, and throughout the pandemic, it became a way for me to feel kind of productive. I started making dishcloths as gifts for friends. I started making costume pieces for myself. It became a way to kind of better my drag craft over the pandemic. Unfortunately, working with your hands can also exacerbate uh, carpal tunnel syndrome or arthritis, we're not really sure. So a lot of what I get to do is sacrifice my own comfort for looking good and feeling good. Because if I'm not doing something with my hands, people are going to think that I'm lazy. Because I look really lazy right now, right? <laughs> so, I am going to take this time to go and uh, untangle whatever's in here so that I have something to show you by the end of the show. So what's the deal with hospitals? If you're even on, as, as, as any uh, frequent hospital patient knows, if you're even on solid foods, it looks just as bad on the tray as it does coming up later on, as our next performer knows all too well. Please welcome to the stage, Diana. There's a particular kinship and solidarity shared in breaking the stalest bread with roommates. The food is not good. It's not good. Food is just it's terrible. And none of it is fresh. It's made. It is all shipped in on in another facility from the other end of the province. In another part of the city. And they truck it in. Big giant refrigerated truck. And like a giant, they call it an oven, but it's more like a giant microwave. They hold it in these thermalization units. Soggy, so or one like half over trays, and you get condensation. And one half of the tray, and is everything warm. is contained in plastic. Choices during uh, meal times, but half the time we run out. You know, they don't send enough for everybody to be full. Very rarely am I full. I am very fortunate to have food on my table, but the food's gross, bro. It's gross, bro. It's not good. Just so like it's just the same stuff over and over and over and over again, over and over and over and over again. Don't send it off. Very rarely am I full.
so young in life and confined to a wheelchair? Guilt? Perhaps that your own children uh, will never face something like that. Or is it fear? Abject terror at what they may be capable of. <laughs> Presenting the world premiere of Wheels of Rage! <laughs> Join us tonight for this special Action 5 news report, Wheels of Rage, with investigative reporter Joe Harkins. In this hugely charming Winnipeg neighborhood, residents are gripped by a new fear, a fear they never could have imagined. Ruthless, rolling children filled with rage have made the streets their own. The average citizen can only hope they do not cross paths with these frightening real warriors. As soon as you hear the squeak of the wheel, I look for good times. I'm so tired of being scared. I'm tired. Sources tell us that these violent children were first brought together to share a common experience and so that they would not feel so alone at the Wheels of Change healing group. The motive, of course, was to empower them, but no one would have guessed that that power would go in such a completely different direction. I knew one of the boys before. He was so nice until he joined the special group. I told him the other day what an inspiration he is to me, and he said my mom is a f***ing ass. No, able-bodied 
Question. Why do they do that? We try to get closer so that we can understand what brought on this anger. Is it pandemic panic? Neighborhood parents who just can't control their kids? We spoke to an ex gang member who managed to escape. I just wanted to play basketball and hang out, you know? But they, they're bullies, they're drunk with power. want to ask a question i'm not with the cops but is there a message you are trying to send why are you terrorizing the neighborhood is this about barriers or feelings of marginalization butts of barriers yeah but the good news is the mayor has increased police presence in the neighborhood and feels that these wheeled warriors will be under control very soon No children were hurt, maimed, or otherwise disabled during the making of this film. Meanwhile, in a suburban home, uselessness looms. Great. Just great. Green. Yes. Ben. 
and chopped it. Flour. Three bam. John was accepted to Harvard. Well, Julia just graduated. She has her master's now. Well, Stephen just got his PhD last week. <laughs> but you know, John has a big shoes to fill. For one thing, David's been at the firm for five years now. Five years now. And they're giving him all the big cases. Big, big fish. And three dog. Well, Beth is so specialized that she's getting referrals from all over the province now. Eight track. My Samuel is making a name for himself in cardiology. Half the pickers in town report to him. Is that so? What about you, Eunice? Two bam. Oh. Don't bother her. You have a son, right? Maybe. Mm. It's better left unfulfilled. How is your son, Edith? Take your turn, Irene. What do you want me to say? He's terrible, right? Just terrible. Oh, can we? He's terrible. Your kids are wonderful. I'm a terrible mother. You're all, you all have wonderful children. <clears throat> Oh, oh, no. Oh, shut up, Barbara. You don't know. But she can do half the things your children do. All he ever does is play video games in my basement and eat my food. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. I don't know what to do. I have no idea what I'm doing. I am a terrible mother. I have produced a useless, useless child. But he's very nice. Oh, yes, he's always smiling. And he has a hobby. Yes, yes. Remember when he made, when he baked cookies for the bake sale? Well, they were pretty good. That's a side. At least you have him at home. My John is moving away for four long years, taking ever so difficult courses. Think of the stress on both of us. Well, at least you had meals together. Well, my Beth keeps such long hours, she can only call me once a day. The Stephen gets no respect. He, he can call himself a doctor, but he's not an MD. David never shares his cases. <laughs> he calls it lawyer client privilege. But I'm his mother. <laughs> well, at least you didn't have to sit through that gobbledygook that I had to listen to at Julia's thesis defense. Oh, yes. We all have problems. Life is hard for everyone, Edith, not just you. Can we just play, please? <laughs> Four cracks. So, one dot. Your kids bring you pride. Oh, pride is overrated. It's it's really a hassle. All of it. So much work, and then you say goodbye. A mother's heart bleeds when they don't need you anymore. He just takes and takes, and he doesn't give anything back. He's trying his best. Be gentle on him, Edith. I ask myself, you know, can I do this for another five years? Another ten? I just don't know. I have no idea what I'm going to do. Dude, if I have to do this for another 10 years, I think I'm going to go crazy, or die, or both. And if he's this useless at eight, I can't imagine him at 18. <laughs>
If you don't make me spell it out for you All of the feelings that I got for you Can't be explained but I can try for you Yeah baby don't make me spell it out for you You keep on asking me the same questions And second guessing all my intentions Should know by the way I use my compression That you got the answers to my confessions It's like I'm powerful with a little bit of tender And emotional, sexual bender Mess me up, yeah, but no one does it better There's nothing better That's just the way you make me feel That's just the way you make me feel That's just the way you uh-huh. So good, so good, so fucking real Uh-huh That's just the way you make me feel That's just the way you make me feel That's just the way you make me feel You know I love you so please don't stop it You got me right here in your jean pocket Laying your body on the shag carpet Oh You know I love you so please don't stop it It's like I'm powerful with a little bit of tender and emotional sexual bender. Mess me up, yeah, but no one does it better. There's nothing better. Oh. That's just the way you make me feel. That's just the way you make me feel. Uh-huh. So good, so good, so fucking real. Uh-huh. That's just the way you make me feel. That's just the way you make me feel That's just the way that I feel now, baby Good God, I can't help it Hey, that's just the way that I feel Yeah, please, I can't help it It's like I'm powerful with a little bit of tender And emotional, sexual bender Mess me up, yeah, but no one does That's just the way you make me feel. That's just the way you make me feel. So 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 fucking so fucking good. That's just the way you make me feel. That's just the way you make me feel. That's just the way you make me feel. You make me feel so so fucking so so good. Our next performer is a first timer in the Sick and Twisted Cabaret. She's described being part of the cabaret as a dream come true. Really, it's been a dream come true having her with us. Please welcome, with some spoken word for you, Kathy Arnold. Useless users. The belief came from Nazi Germany. A person with a serious medical problem or a disability. Seen as requiring help from society, but giving nothing back. Useless. I am not normal. I am not able. I am not seen in your world. I am the one you place in the dark. I am the one with no purpose, no ability, no service. I am an oracle who sees the cracks, who tries to cover. I see the lies and the smirks behind the promises. I told you, stitching the system would not mend it. I told you, 
it would come a mysterious caustic agent that would take you down to as me hold on just a little longer hold on just a little while longer hold on just a little while longer everything will be all right everything will be all right waste of space we told you to hide your ticket because we knew the help rationing would start soon. We told you to stock the bits and pieces in your warehouses. We told you to hold the fear faces of your dearest in your eyes before they disappear from memory. We told you like the black death the land would not have enough room to bury all the souls. We told you the mechanisms you built would barricade you in your homes. We told you the fear would burn in agony and force you underground as we pray on just a little Just a little while longer, pray on. Just a little while longer, everything will be alright. Everything will be alright. Loser, you and I share the same fate, but you brought me. You bankrolled the ones you thought were worthy. You dissected the supported hands you were we used and we grasped for threads of stability. You forced us into a fear ridden dark refuge that sank of anger and anxiety you forgot the chargers we fought for you forgot to be civil while we searched for sanctuary you forgot we are the oracles and we always resist from being forgotten as we fight on just a little while longer, fight on. Just a little while longer, fight on. Just a little while longer, everything will be alright. Everything will be all right. We are not useless or a waste of space or losers.
But there's a pretty good No, it's not. It's like, like, this is a sorry. cabaret. It's not a seminar. Okay. Yeah. 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 This piece is about depression and why we need to be more depressed <laughs> and why we don't. the world was more depressed. That's ridiculous. Yeah, but take the Nazis. All those evil people. Well, imagine if they were depressed. Huh? Depressed to the point of uselessness. Hmm. Useless Nazis. What a difference that would have made. Useless just like that would have been so much more useful. I mean, it's not that we are all Nazis, but I do wish more people were depressed in the right way. Yeah, imagine if the Russian general staff was too depressed to oversee the invasion of Ukraine. <laughs> if Enbridge executives were dysfunctionally morose while running pipelines to break their rainforests. If politicians around the world ran short of essential brain chemicals when trying to roll back people's right to vote. Wouldn't we all be better off if more incapacitating depression struck us while we drive ourselves to see and win and gain and consume at the expense of our families? Our Earth? Ourselves? You know, this isn't much of a dialogue. I wanted a dialogue. I think I specifically requested a dialogue. They are just echoing. I think you're echoing me at this point. Oh, mature. Okay, you know, if we could just, I don't know, look after ourselves, maybe grow some food, hang out with friends every once in a while, take up a sport, I think the world would be in a much better position. I mean, I mean, you, you know mean, I mean, if more people were significantly depressed, in the right way, we'd be less able to succeed in our achievements of growing our ecology and society closer to the left. I couldn't have said it better myself. You didn't say it better yourself. <laughs> you know, I, I ran with this idea of yours, and I, I created a depressing gas called Depressium. <laughs> I even organized factories to make it. We made lots, and, and distributed it everywhere for release. snag. We ran into a snag. You see, I wanted to create the right kind of depression, uh, but uh, something went wrong. I'm not surprised. Too much of a good thing. So, I guess your company just vanished away like dust in the desert? Oh, no. No, no, no. They, they, they're a very successful company. They pump out depression and anxiety of the usual kind. Lots of it. Lots and lots of it. They're called Facebook now. <laughs> you see, I wanted to create the right kind of depression because there's another plus to it. You see, depressed folks are more accurate in their assessments than regular people. At least several studies show it. And society does need accuracy in the smoke and mirrors era. But yeah, yeah, it's the undepressed people that are heavier users of rose colored glasses. <laughs> they think themselves smarter, more successful, more attractive, even taller than they are. But it's depressed people who, well, can't help but see it like it is. Uh, granted, in some extreme cases of depression, you can't help but see it like it isn't, casting tall shadows. That's another story. <laughs> so, 
So we'd be better off if we didn't make a press. <laughs> it's a happy thought. <laughs> and it's true to a point. But it's also a pretense, a dream, a rationalization. Because the fact is, depression sucks. When you're depressed, you're neurochemically maimed, neurochemically crucified. And so, after 25 years of it, after all the losses in my life that that entailed, I found myself on March 21st, 2022, walking barefoot in the snow at the riverbank at night in these clothes that were out of me. The ground was fucking cold, but it was comforting down by the ice dome of the It was quiet and peaceful in the falling snow. I wanted to soak myself in the frigid water where someone opened the side of ice and to lie down on the bank and go to sleep. I almost did, but things hurt so much and it hurt so much for so long. I almost did, but I wanted to, but I didn't. For from that death I will always turn away. I, my sun well and mind, heart, self, I turn towards something else. For I am, we are, invicta, the unconquered. Mother trees connect the other trees in the forest. A twin 
know what a really significant place is. He didn't say it really. He put network, survival line. There are other hidden networks in the world, like the one that connects the disability community. Ours is far more tenuous, formed of friendship and follow online forums and in-person events. We don't have an official name for our mother trees, and their role is far more fluid. Some days we're the mother, other days the tree is in the tree. In non-metaphorical forests, what they mostly do is share nutrients and water tapped by the deeper roots. We kind of do that too, only we call it snack time. <laughs> it's a very important human experience. But we share so much more than nutrients. There are some saplings that start off just fine, but others take root in far more treacherous terrain. For them, we send the sports. And no, that doesn't mean forcing them to become a loud and proud advocate. It means showing them that while they may have to stretch and twist to find their place in the sun, they belong in the forest. That they don't have to apologize constantly for existing. That they don't need to settle for a small, bland life. That they will have choices. But saplings, we spread hope. There are other trees that are going along just fine until suddenly drought strikes and they find themselves needing the network. That's the thing about disability. It can strike at any moment with no warning, no chance to prepare. And the terrible weight of being othered is a horrible burden to carry. Close friends, support groups, survival guides, someone to listen to you go on a 10 minute rant about that specialist you have to go see. There are other trees who stand on the very edges of the forest and feel like they're alone. We'll reach out to them. We might not know the exact shape of what they're going through, but chances are one of us has brushed up against the edges of it enough to offer something of value. Even if it's just really inappropriate disability needs no one else could send you. <laughs> it can work in reverse, too. They don't send from a tree in distress. It may be too late for them, but other trees in the forest can prepare, brace themselves. We're living through that now on a global scale. And suddenly a huge wave of trees is finding that they need to network, need to find a new way to survive, to thrive. We were ready for them. We knew even before they asked, People first start drawing on the network, we can feel like all they do is take, like they're a drain. I think we all feel like that sometimes. But what I've learned from finally being a conscious part of the network is that we all get something back. I've learned to be kinder to myself to grant myself the grace I grant other trees. And sending pieces of myself out on the network, I've learned a level of acceptance that little sapling me could never have imagined. And the giving, it's a gift in and of itself. Finally, a purpose for all we went through as we took root. going through a forest fire unlike any in its lifetime. It will leave a mark. But sometimes, even if 
adventure of forest fire helps the forest come back stronger, better. You have a choice, a chance to come back better, kinder, more cohesive ecosystem that lets the forest flourish as a whole. And because our forest cannot survive another fire, Okay. All right. It's about damn time. 